Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Rambling Indefinitely. Uh, I was stuck in a traffic jam, so I thought maybe I'll record a video while I'm at it. And I was thinking about a topic, and I thought I can tell you about differences between Ardor and LMMS. Before I begin, I want to say that I have written a spreadsheet with uh, a detailed comparison between Ardor and LMMS. So everything that I say in this video is covered there and also much more. Please go to the link in the description. You can download the file and just read through. And hopefully it's going to be a good supplement for this video. Mm, I've had people ask me questions in comments and said stuff like that. Should they learn Ardor or LMMS? What is the best one? And of course, as the always, the answer is there's not a best one per se, there is the best one for your needs and for your actual situation. So let's talk about this. I was using LMMS since about 2008, I guess, and I made multiple long plays with LMMS five, something like that, and some singles, so I have quite a lot of experience. On the other hand, I was also using Ardor all that time, however not for making electronic music, because electronic music requires MIDI sequencing, and Ardor only supports that from version 3. And when I was using it back then, it was Ardor 2, and for many years there was not a new version. <clears throat> However, then Ardor 3 came with initial MIDI tracks support and you could finally sequence synth parts in Ardor. And now we're at Ardor 5 and Ardor 6 is being developed. <clears throat> and, it, and Ardor has MIDI functionality for quite a while. It's not super polished yet, but it's perfectly functional. And for about a year or a year and a half, I was making uh, synthesized electronic music with Ardor to kind of familiarize myself with it, and I decided to switch all my music production to Ardor. So I am not going to start any new projects with LMMS. I'm going to use Ardor for that. Also, as a proof of concept that Ardor is perfectly capable of doing that, but for some different reasons too. Which is why you might choose Ardor over LMMS if you always also have similar needs as I do. For example, in LMMS you have no way of recording audio directly. All you can do is record it in some other program like Ardor All Audacity and import that audio and place it on your timeline. LMMS does not support that. Also, LMMS doesn't support LV2 plugin format, which is the newer, superior standard for LATSPA. So, LATSPA, or LADSPA, as you might say, was the first plugin type for Linux, the open source audio plugin format. LV2 is LATSPA version 2, basically, that's the name. It's the second one. And the big difference between the two, the most important one for the users, is that LV2 plugins, unlike LATSPA plugins, can have custom user interfaces, which is all the rage and have been about VSTs and, you know. And it's not like you need plugins that support custom user interfaces to have, I don't know, good sounding plugins and be able to do music. No, you don't. You can do all your stuff perfectly fine with LATSPA plugins just like I did it for many, many years using LMMS, because it doesn't support LV2. It, however, has some built-in plugins that have custom GUIs. For example, the new version of LMMS has a nice equalizer plugin that has a custom GUI and it has some spectrum analysis in, built in, so it's pretty nice, pretty usable, and I use it all the time, since it is, if I'm using LMMS. However, with Ardor, you can use any EQ plugin with a custom UI you want. For example, EQ 10Q plugins, which are great, or Calf Equalizer, which is also very nice. And, you know, if you don't 
don't have that variety, variety and you don't have that choice with LMS, you just have to use LV2, uh, sorry, you just have to use LATSPA, which has no GUI, so I was using, I don't know, I was using some multiband, I wasn't hardly using parametric Q because it's hard to figure out without a GUI, like it's not super hard but it's a bit difficult, I was using graphic EQ in LMS for the most part uh, a 10 band EQ with, with you know just and it was doing everything I needed and if I needed something very surgical to just cut out something or boost something I was I used a single single parametric that's the name of the plugin and it's just one parametric filter so it's a peak peak filter Okay, so back to, to the differences between LMMS and Ardor. So, in LMMS, sequencing MIDI is much easier and faster, I would say. Or at least, I got used to it very much and I can use it very quick. Ardor is a bit slower in that regard and it's a bit, it's different in approach. In, LMM, in, LMM, in LMMS, you have a single piano roll window that you open all your regions in to be edited while in Ardor you have a small piano roll in every track every MIDI track has its own piano roll it has it has its downsides and its upsides I at first I was pretty perplexed by this in Ardor and I asked if there is a way to just have a maybe optional um, separate piano roll editor for for doing MIDI work however it's uh, I found out it's absolutely like it's not going to happen it's it's outside of the scope and I understand that and I grew to like what Ardor does and I learned to use it and I'm well, right now I'm feeling quite quite fine with it and I can use it pretty quick not as fast as I use LMMS yet because I've been using LMMS for I don't know nine years I can't believe, I don't know, maybe I'm lying, maybe I'm, maybe not, not as much, I don't know, maybe. Anyway, so Ardor is perfectly capable, in my opinion, in doing MIDI work, and because it supports more plugins, and it has better support for the plugins, it also handles multiple channels very well, very well. you can configure pin configurations, you can change how the audio is rooted in and out of plugins that don't support stereo for example or you can run multiple instances of the same plugin in parallel with a different channel configuration so you can for example configure it to use three different processors and you can I don't know process every, use a crossover filter plug-in before and a mixer plug-in after to just build your multiband compressor if you want or build a multiband flanger if you want that in Ardor and you don't need a specialized plugin for that you just need to learn the workflow of using pin configurations and basically doing your own multiband processing <laughs> configurations within a single track with not using buses or something like that before I would have to do it with buses because in Ardor 4 there was no pin connections you couldn't do this kind of stuff but now in Ardor 5 we have pin connections and this is absolutely outrageously brilliant you can just do poof it's amazing 
So I prefer Ardor for sound design and music composition. It also, I think, LMMS handles automation a little bit strangely in my perception. <clears throat> I learned to use it and once you understand that, that, that automation in LMMS works like a tape machine and you have to place the regions where you want them to be and unless you <coughs> unless you <coughs> specify what is going to happen which automation value is to be executed at any given point in your timeline you might end up with random situations <coughs> excuse me harder is kind of kind of handling this for you because there is no situation when the automation value is undefined in Ardor, in each point of time on your timeline, the automation value is defined and it is visible. So you always know what automation will be executed, no matter if you jump around with the playhead around your session. In LMMS, this stuff can happen, so you kind of have to understand it and hack your way around it to, to avoid unexpected results. Wait a minute! Actually, I just checked it and they fixed it. LMMS has no undefined regions on the timeline with automation right now. Weehee! So this complaint is no more. That's really cool because it takes out a whole lot of problems. So you don't realize, why is my session sounding different now? Because you played some automation somewhere and then you jumped and that automation still was in effect and the values were not updated to automation that was in other places where you would expect them to be. Now it works okay, so no worries. I would say LMS is better if you are starting out. It's simpler, it doesn't have m many advanced tools that Ardor will give you, but at the start you don't need that. And it is actually beneficial if you have a limited arsenal because you are forced to understand what you have. And to begin making music, you need to start having fun and you need to start understanding what you're doing. That's my advice. <coughs> Excuse me. Have fun and um, try to understand as much as you can and fiddle with stuff until you understand what it does. Try to understand it as deep as you can. LMS is perfectly fine if we're doing serious production However, you would need to, you know, like get used to using plugins that have no fancy QE and it might be a bit tricky. It is good to that regard, it forces you to use your ears because sometimes we just rely on the beautiful graphical interfaces of the plugins to tell us if it's gonna sound good or not. It doesn't have anything to do with that. A fancy GUI plugin can sound as bad as an ugly plugin. So we sometimes just tell ourselves that if it looks good, it has to sound good, right? And we can lie to our ears, you know, just think that we hear something different when we don't. So not having beautiful GUIs for plugins helps you get around that. Can I get there? <clears throat> On the other hand, well, Ardor gives you this whole amazing arsenal of great plugins that you can't easily use in LMS. Well, you can use VST and LEV2 instruments in LMS by using Carla Rack instrument, which is basically running Carla inside LMS as an instrument plugin. So you, for example, can use Helm or Zenfusion or whatever, whatever you want inside LMMS but only as an instrument and you have no way of passing automation automation data to this plugin so it's a bit limited in Ardor you can automate everything and for example with Zenfusion you can do pretty crazy things because you have, you have 16 channels of automation and you can route anything to that so there's pretty you just I don't know you can it's pretty crazy and you can do, use this in Ardor, you can't use it in LMS, unfortunately. And I don't see LV2 support coming any soon, anytime soon in LMS. I don't know what is the state because I haven't been following the development very tightly uh, 
recently because I focus on Ardor. And this is on the to-do list for years. I don't know if it's gonna come anywhere out soon because it's a very difficult thing. If they can do it, that's great and LMMS is gonna jump on a whole new level. But well, right now you can use LV2 instruments with no automation. You can't use LV2 effect plugins. So you can't use Calf plugins with their GUIs. You can use the LATSPA versions. <clears throat> and also, you know, in Ardor you can use the pin, uh, pin connections to use sidechain plugins. In LMMS you don't really have this option. Like you, in theory, can use side chaining for everything, which is something cool that Ardor doesn't have, because you have peak controller, and you can basically plug it somewhere in your audio path, and it will generate a control path, a control signal, <clears throat> based on a on an envelope follower, like in a compressor. Actually, they extended this in the last version and it, it is it has more features and it works very much like a compressor. However, this is not sample accurate, so it um, unfortunately it introduces some stir, some zipping, zipper noise, so called. It's basically a low time resolution signal which produces just you know a stair step function. So for for, for example, if you want to do sidechain compression with this, with an amplifier plugin, which I was doing for a long time, you have the problem that uh, if you're doing this to a bass sound, you're gonna have clicks because the bass frequencies will produce bad clicks with this uh, zipper noise artifacts. High frequencies are not so much affected because there's not much meat of the waveform to be chopped up with this zipper noise. But low frequencies will be affected, so it's not no good for doing bass side chaining. I mean, you can do it, but it's tricky and <clears throat> it might sound bad. However, there is a custom calf side chain compressor that basically exposes a side chain knob that you can route to the peak controller and use that, and then you have you have no problem. Maybe you could actually do the same thing with any compressor, just using the peak controller to drive a threshold knob on the compressor. Maybe that would also work without the zipper noise artifacts. I'm not sure, haven't tried this. So you can do good sounding, well sounding sidechain compression in LMMS, thanks uh, to Cubition. Thanks, for, thanks to Cubition for teaching me that. I learned this trick from his video. I didn't know it before and I was doing it wrong. Actually, I couldn't find the video by Cubition. I have found the video by Umkaruye. I don't know if I pronounced wrong. And, uh, Hi guys. I'm and he explains uh, how to use the peak controller and the calf sidechain compressor with it to achieve proper side chaining in LMS. So you can watch his video if you want to learn that. However, if you are brave and you want to do more, especially if you want to record guitars, vocals, if you... you to try and learn Ardor instead because Ardor at first Ardor was a audio editing program only like a hard disk recorder it was it has had no MIDI support as I told you already and the editing workflow for audio is sublime it's it's gorgeous it's so fast so efficient and so reliable I've I've recorded and edited multiple audiobooks I have also mixed and edited audio for two full-length documentary movies with Ardor because it has video support. It has a video timeline and video playback synced with the audio. Uh, LMMS has none of that, unfortunately. <sighs> Dozens of hours of uh, podcasts with Ardor. It's fantastic for audio. So if you are going to record bands, 
or yourself or you're a single or singer songwriter type of person and you want to you know, play your guitar and record your vocals Ardor is the way to go if you want to go open source in my opinion maybe you would also be good serve be well served by Q Tractor hey I never recorded anything in a Q Tractor before Woo! but I haven't used Q Tractor and I don't know it so I can't really tell you there are other people on YouTube who can teach you Q-Tractor. There is a person who is making Q-Tractor tutorials on YouTube. The name is Yphil. And you can check out his videos. He teaches Q-Tractor. Yphil! Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of Yphil. Today we are going to make a song in Q-Tractor. So yeah, I think that's it. If you have any more questions, about differences between Ardor and LMMS, let me know in the comments. I hope you've learned something. Thanks for watching. Great thanks to all my Patreon supporters. The Patreon support has been growing enormously. Woo. In the recent weeks, I am just stunned. Uh, if this rate of development is going to be a thing, I guess in I'm, I'm soon going to be able to take a few days off every month to just work on videos and maybe in one, two, maybe three years I will be able to probably do this as my half-time job which will be fabulous yeah thank you so much just go make some music I'll see you in the next video bye Now let's pick up my new network router and the switch. Gotta do some cables. Gotta do some home networking stuff because, yeah, I needed a dual band Wi Fi router so I can pull video files from this smartphone fast because I could use it as a secondary camera for Anfa vlog or something else. But my home network is so slow that, oh my goodness, it's taking ages. And this is the only device I have that records in 4K. I don't know if it's any good. It actually records in 4K. Maybe with good lighting it could be useful. I don't know. Maybe I'll use it for auto guide. I don't know. We'll see. What are you doing, man? Are you going to turn left or not? Why are you standing here? You don't have the yellow flashing light, huh? <clears throat> no shit, Sherlock, we're stuck. Is he reading a message or what? Or is he writing a message? I don't know. Are you still here? Have I taken the right... Oh man, maybe I took the wrong... Yeah, maybe I took a wrong turn. Can I go here? Should be able to. Ah, yeah. Woo! Sheesh! Oh man. Oh, I wanted to drift. Didn't quite make it. Woo! What was that? It's snowing today. It wasn't snowing for like two weeks. I thought the, the spring is already here. It looks like it's not. <laughs> Where can I stop, man? I can stop here. I think I can. There's no sign I can't. Am I gonna blow something up? Looks like not. Okay. I need you now. Actually, 
<laughs> I checked and I parked right under a sign that just forbids that. So no good.